The Mac Wheel MX Pro is a scooter that I want to like. It actually has a decent amount of great features, but there are just a few too many small issues with it for me to be able to wholeheartedly recommend it over other entry-level options out there. It also has one big issue, the price. At $700, this thing is about $150 to $200 more expensive than it probably should be. That's not to say that this is a bad scooter in of itself, it's just overpriced. Let's look at the features and performance of this scooter so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's look at the good first because there's definitely stuff to like about this scooter. The MX Pro is built really well. The scooter feels solid with minimal stem play and with a rigid construction. It doesn't bend or flex excessively when riding over bumps and dips. The style of folding lock can be tightened down fairly easily to make sure the scooter is rock solid. So if you get this scooter or a scooter like this with this type of um, locking mechanism, it's really easy to tighten it down and make sure it's nice and tight. You have a little grub screw here that you just have to back out and then this screw gets actually loosened so that it wedges against here better. You just kind of have to play with making sure it's easy to like press locked, but that there's a little bit more resistance. So mine's just a touch loose right now. So I'm gonna want to tighten that. The thumb throttle is intuitive and easy to use. And the brake is on the opposite side of the handlebars from the throttle to minimize confusion for new or learning riders. The rear disc brake combined with the electronic braking makes the scooter stop quickly from any speed. The 350 watt front hub motor and top speed of 15 to 16 miles an hour is really standard for super entry level scooters like this. The issue is that for $700, the scooter should definitely get closer to 20 miles an hour, similar to the other scooters in the price range. The range on the scooter is really decent, comfortably getting over 15 miles of range on a full battery. The speed settings, one to three, allow you to control the top speed of the scooter. Speed setting one and two are great if you want to keep your speed low to learn or for younger riders using the scooter. For most riders and in most conditions, you will want to keep the scooter in speed mode three, which will allow the scooter to reach its top speed. The handlebar grips are decent on the scooter. They feel good on the hand and don't move around too much. Handlebar width is quite narrow, but that's expected from these fixed handlebar scooters. The MX Pro folds down to a really manageable size and is very light at around 30 pounds. Its portability is one of the biggest strengths of this scooter and one of the main reasons you might want to spend the extra money for this scooter. The scooter has solid tires, which are great for an entry level scooter, so you don't have to worry about annoying flat tires. The ride quality of a scooter that goes this speed typically isn't awful even with solid tires, but only having 8 inch wheels and no suspension at this price is quite disappointing. 10 inch wheels should be standard at this price to help with bumps, especially if you don't have any suspension. The one upside of these smaller wheels is the decreased weight and size and increased portability. The deck on this scooter is really small given that you can't rest your rear foot on the back mudguard at all. It feels quite cramped to ride and basically forces you into one single riding position. Having a braced mudguard so you could put a little weight on the back would make it easier to ride if you have large feet like myself. Cruise control is auto-enabled out of the box, so if you're cruising at a constant speed for a couple seconds, it enables cruise control and maintains your current speed. Some people may like this feature, but I never have and I always disable it on all my scooters. Having it enabled out of the box means that if you want to change it, you have to navigate Mac Wheel's absolute mess of an app. Let's look at my experience with this app real quick. It has less than three stars on the Google Play Store, and that was a pretty good indication of things to come. When I opened the app, it asked me to sign in or make an account. What for? Why do I need an account to turn off cruise control on my scooter? Luckily, I was able to skip that step, but it does keep prompting you to log in while using the app. Next, I had to connect to the scooter via Bluetooth. The app does a good job of finding the scooter quickly once it's on, but then when I would click on the scooter, it wouldn't connect or do anything. After exiting the app a number of times, and finally being able to click on the scooter, it asks for a password. I'm not sure why you would want to password protect the two settings that you can actually change on the scooter, but you can, I guess. The default password is six zeros, which I typed and then attempted to press okay. 
Pressing OK didn't work, but pressing Cancel did. It took me half a dozen times of exiting the app and redoing this whole process to finally get it to connect, just so I could hit the settings button and turn off cruise control. You can also change between kilometers per hour and miles per hour in the app, and a couple other things, but that's it. Call me a boomer, but having an app to control a few settings on a scooter doesn't make it easier to use or add anything of value to my experience. Tying more technology into a scooter, especially one as basic and entry level as this, kind of feels pointless. Just let me triple click the mode button on the scooter to turn off cruise control. Way easier. Anyway, I'm done ranting about the app. Another issue with this scooter is its extremely poor hill climbing capabilities. This is an issue with most entry level single motor scooters, but it's particularly frustrating on this scooter given its price. Welcome to the Arcanine Rides hill test for the Mac Wheel MX Pro. This is kind of the steepest hill in the area, and so if it can do this, then it can kind of do, I figure it can do pretty much any hills that I'm gonna need it to, and it would probably do any hills that you would need. So I'm gonna be honest, based on like the, the amount I've ridden so far and how it's felt so far, I don't have high hopes for this scooter to make it up this hill, but we will see. So I, I believe the max speed on this thing is 15 miles an hour. And I just don't think there's enough oomph in this motor to get me up this hill. Eight miles an hour. Eight, seven. Oh, not bad. It got down to four miles an hour there. This is throttle fully down. Max speed setting, seven, six. Okay, kind of leveling out back up to seven, eight. So it did, it, it did the hill, but at about six miles an hour. Uh, so at least it did it. So if you needed it to do a hill like that, you could do it at slightly faster than walking speed. <laughs> Overall, there are some great features on the scooter and some shortcomings that could be more easily forgiven if the scooter was less pricey. However, if you want a small, compact, 8-inch scooter for riding that last mile on your commute and want the quality the scooter offers and are willing to pay a little more for it, then this might be a good choice for you. In any case, the Amex Pro will be linked below if you want to check it out yourself. It could also be worth it to check the link to see if there is a sale on it or if MacWheel ends up dropping the price. Thanks for watching. Get subbed for more electric scooter content and I'll see you in the next video.